As we all know by now, the Bitcoin ecosystem consists of users, miners, software developers, and applications like exchanges, wallets, and blockchain explorers. Other stakeholders are expected to get increasingly involved as well. Regulators and governments around the world are already paying close attention to the ecosystem. In this part of the course, we'll focus on the software side of things. All participants in the Bitcoin network run software, which is developed and maintained by software engineers. Bitcoin was first developed as a software protocol by Satoshi Nakamoto, who produced the initial code base. Shortly after the launch, Satoshi passed on the continued development and maintenance of the code to a group of software development enthusiasts who embraced the idea. This initial group has evolved into the core development team of Bitcoin. That said, Bitcoin is an open source project and everyone can review the code and contribute with development proposals. Bitcoin Core is the open source software code base that powers Bitcoin. It is known as the reference implementation of Bitcoin, meaning that it is the main point of reference of how the Bitcoin system functions. It determines all aspects of the system, such as wallets, transactions, block validation, node setup, and network protocol in the peer-to-peer -peer network. Now on to the key software applications used in the ecosystem. Wallets, containing users' private keys, are the tool necessary to store funds and make transactions on the blockchain. They are the most common user interface to the Bitcoin system. In a way, this is similar to web browsers, being the most common user interface to the World Wide Web and its HTTP protocol. All wallets basically contain cryptographic keys giving access to coins on the blockchain. We covered cryptographic keys in detail in our cryptography section. Wallets can be divided into several types depending on the way they store and manage keys. We can have desktop wallets, representing software applications installed and run on PCs and laptops. We can also have mobile wallets, which are mobile applications installed on smartphones. In addition, there are web wallets, which are accessed through a web browser. These wallets are stored on a third-party server, similar to some email account services such as Gmail. Besides these software wallet applications, we can also have some wallets which are not software-based, but we should mention them here anyway as they are quite important. These are hardware wallets and paper wallets. Hardware wallets are specialized hardware devices designed to securely store private keys. In their appearance, they are similar to USB sticks. Paper wallets, on the other hand, are a surprisingly low-tech but highly effective solution against potential hacking attacks, and they simply store cryptographic keys on paper. Of course, such paper wallets must be securely physically stored to mitigate the risk of theft or loss. Wallets that store keys offline are also known as cold storage. We'll repeat this here again, as it is so important to remember, whoever controls the private keys controls the funds on the blockchain, so any wallets must be managed, secured, and backed up with the greatest diligence. Besides wallets, another commonly used software application is a blockchain explorer, which we already mentioned earlier. This is a tool used as a search engine for the blockchain. It allows to track transactions, blocks, and address balances. To provide a familiar analogy from the web, you all probably have used Google Search to find a website on the internet. Similarly, you can use a block explorer to find a specific transaction or an address and its related balance and activity on the blockchain. In this way, you can verify if your transaction has gone through. In other words, if it has been included in a block. This is a primary example of the transparency of public blockchains as everyone can use a block explorer to search for any transaction or address and verify all related activity.